Meat, snot, and gob. Looks like they're up to something again. Hey, are you guys gonna try and make someone immortal? Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm, I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day. You're still alive! Okay, <laughs> lucky for us, Snot and Gob just so happened to steal this huge meat grinder yesterday. <coughs> what are we waiting for? The meat grinder ain't gonna turn itself on. He seems to have lost his memory. More precisely, all his neural connections have been destroyed, and his mind is like a pure white sheet. In some way, we've killed him. And what shall we do with that now? I don't know, but it'll be something interesting. Ah. Wait a minute. Why would you want to kill an immortal? Uh -oh. Ah, you want to get rid of me and take over my show. Damn, he's on to us. Time to slip away. It's okay, we'll create our own show, and then we're going to be great! Get out! I'm sorry, dude, I didn't even ask your name. Oh, Arnold. Nice to meet you. Decided to hang out in the park, did ya? Looks like this burrito was out of your league. Quick, find something to drink. Arnold, wait. God knows what might be in this magic shop. Well, since you successfully solved your Mexican food problem, let's go have some fun. What a huge line. It looks like you'll have to wait for a bit. Or... Arnold, this is not a good thing to do. Looks like this cute little granny needs your help. Arnold, watch out! You know, Arnold... I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected. It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you gonna use your immortality? Got it, you'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? <laughs>
Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly, but you will lag behind in progress and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Oh, Arnold, you came back just in time. The sun is dying and turning into a supernova, and you got the best seat to see the death of our solar system. Say goodbye to planet Earth. I guess that burrito was a mistake. I love to wake him up when he's sleeping so sweetly. Get up, lazy butt! I have something for you, Arnold. You now have just 24 hours to live. I think you should Google what to do in such a situation. Yeah. First, clear your browser history. And here are the top three answers to this burning question. How would you spend the last day of your life with loved ones? I think for you, Arnold, this probably ain't the right answer. The second option is to gorge yourself on junk food. Well, you already do that every day. And finally, number three, spend the day at the ocean with a loved one. Ooh, it just got interesting. Arnold, are you really gonna do what you've been dreaming of all your life? Whoopsie daisy, somebody ran out of gas and money. money, money, money. Great idea, you can get a loan and really live it up on your last day. Get the maximum, you'll feel like the richest dude on the planet. Jeff Bezos, the owner of Amazon, makes enough money to buy a new Tesla Model S every 50 seconds. You're rich now, Arnold. You can rent your own plane and fly anywhere you want. What are you up to? Wow, you're gonna take Tagaya from her boyfriend and take her on a trip with you. Arnold, you're my hero. Ah, if only we could turn back time and make this moment really last. What if I told you it's possible to keep the day from ending? You need to overtake the sun. To do this, we gotta fly west along the equator at a speed of 1,667 kilometers per hour. If you can fly at that speed, the day will never end. Regrettably, this won't affect your lifetimer in the slightest. It's your last few seconds, Arnold. You're alive! Ah, I see. According to the contract you signed, you have no right to die until you pay off the loan. Bye-bye, yeah. Arnold. <laughs> Uh, Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future. Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes. He needs your help. That's why you're going to the year 2050. Oh, dear. That's not the bright future people are thinking about. Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming. The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? 
The planet is on the brink of destruction, and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Huh? Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it. Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! Arnold! Arnold! Are you okay? Arnold, you were seriously injured. So the doctors gave you some upgrades. Almost as good as new. But there is a problem. Now we need a soldier without implants, and you need to travel back in time and find him. And here's your volunteer. Get him into the portal. Hmm, deja vu. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Poor Arnold. He's been stuck in a traffic jam for three hours because of road repairs. He's already rifled through the glove box, found last year's french fries, and is listening for the hundredth time to a Ricky Martin CD that's stuck in the stereo. I agree. It's appalling. Don't do it, Arnold. You won't save any time, and it's really dangerous. Say thank you, Arnie. I'm the one who saved your butt by stopping time, just like they do in cartoons. What would you do first in such a situation? Maybe go look in the Pentagon archives and find out if Armstrong really did go to the moon. Or maybe you dare to kiss Susie. Ooh. The main thing is not to end up in Japan. They love stopping time. I mean, they just really, really love it. In terms of physics, if time stops, then everything stops. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that time is one of the components of speed and distance. If one of these values is zero, then all the others will be zero as well. Now, onward to adventure. Oops. Light particles and photons have also stopped. Accordingly, the ability to distinguish anything with your eyesight has disappeared. And you won't be able to drink any water. Everything is frozen. Here's another interesting fact. A stream of light which left Earth 65 million years ago is now 65 million light years away. And someone with a large enough telescope pointed right at the Earth can now see the dinosaurs. But I suggest we return to reality, Arnold. Now you won't feel like you're wasting time because every second of our lives is beautiful. Oh, fudge. Well, apparently not today. <sighs> Another evening session of degradation watching mm. TV. So what do we have here? Elon Musk has launched a new rocket into space. And space has launched a meteor back at Elon Musk. Arnold, relax. You don't even know what a meteor is. A meteor is a large celestial body of cosmic origin. Their mass ranges from a few grams to thousands of tons. And don't be scared. There's only one case of a meteor strike hitting a person in history in 1954. And even then, it just hit somebody in their leg. 
It seems like somebody's volunteering to save the planet. And he's just <laughs> bursting with enthusiasm. It looks like this episode will be the shortest ever. And have a happy end. Ah, uh, no, never mind. Same old, same old. Seems like our planet is about to be destroyed. Or maybe there's another savior. Could it be Arnold? Excellent. We'll pick an outfit for you. So this one is a no. Definitely not this one. Yee! No, not that one. Now this one. This is what you need. Although we could just copy what Project Dart from SpaceX did. It's planned that in 2022, a spacecraft weighing 500 kilograms will ram into an asteroid named Didymos at a speed of 6 kilometers per second. The autopilot hasn't been installed yet, so you're going to have to fly manually and become a hero. Oh, wow, Arnold, you survived. Pretty much like all the other lowest forms of life, like microbes. But now there is a small issue with water. After a meteor 100 kilometers in diameter hit the Earth, the shockwave destroyed almost all life within a radius of 100,000 square kilometers. There was a huge release of sulfur, and dust and ash from all the destruction rose into the upper atmosphere and blocked access from the sun's mm. rays. You must be hungry. It's good that you kept your space food in the rocket. There wasn't any food. That's terrible, because there's no food left on Earth. It's good that you're in a spacesuit, since it's minus 50 degrees outside, and you don't want to walk here for very long. Watch out! I forgot to add that cockroaches have also survived, and they've mutated just a wee little bit. You better run to infinity and beyond! Arnold, how in blazes did you get yourself into such a state? Sorry, but you can't escape. Even at an altitude of 5,000 meters, you still have to work on your YouTube channel. Where are you flying to? At least check the map. Ooh, looks like you flew right into the Bermuda Triangle. According to rumors, planes and ships often disappear here. Arnold, where did your jet wings and clothes go? Seems like the rumors are true and you're about to disappear. Science doesn't recognize the strange things taking place in the Bermuda Triangle. However, there are several non-scientific theories. According to one of them, everything that disappears here ends up in a parallel universe. Look, everything's a little different here. You look strange even to this dog. As you can see, your house has also changed a lot. I advise you to be careful there. Meet Arnold. This is Arnold, although from a parallel universe. He's much more successful than you, and even sports a stylish mustache. And it looks like he doesn't like you at all. At the bottom of the Bermuda Triangle is the mythical city of Atlantis. Don't ask, because I have no idea why the ancient Atlanteans needed all these planes and ships. But ancient customs and traditions are harsh. Someone like you will be immediately turned into a slave. Or if you can't handle it, you'll be turned into fuel for steamboats. Careful, Arnold! New vehicles are arriving. There is another theory. Everything that happens in the Bermuda Triangle is due to aliens. And perhaps they're taking vehicles to study human technology or putting it in a museum. Just look at how much stuff they have in their exhibits. Since aliens are poorly versed in terrestrial life forms, you were placed with mushrooms. Don't be offended, Arnold. It could be because of your haircut. You won't be bored for long. They say aliens abduct people for a different purpose. You must get pregnant and carry their alien baby. Sorry, Arnold, but aliens are also bad at gender. Did you finally wake up? It seems that at this altitude, you passed out from a lack of oxygen. 
and had some crazy dreams. Oh. And this blackbird mistook you for a rival, as I said. From a scientific point of view, nothing unusual happens in the Bermuda Triangle. Calm down, Arnold. No planes, ships, or people disappear here. Provided, of course, that their jet wings don't run out of fuel. Taking a bath, are you? Imagine if a wave caught you not in the bathroom, but in the sea. The Black Sea is, in fact, also a large bathtub, just the size of 340,000 cubic miles. It would take about 243 million years to fill it up. The sudden movement of tectonic plates causes waves. The seabed rises several hundred meters, thereby creating the deadly tsunami waves. We're now located in Portugal. The highest waves in the world are formed here. It's like a cheetah, but in the world of waves, because its speed has already reached 60 miles per hour. One Hawaiian surfer caught a 79-foot wave here. For this, he got into the Guinness Book of Records. Have you ever heard of a killer wave? These are single waves around 80 to 100 feet high, which can't be seen even from a ship. They can appear suddenly and imperceptibly. Therefore, there's very little time to save a ship's crew. Killer waves can sink a ship in just one hit. Even Conor McGregor would envy such a knockout. The largest wave on record was formed in 1958 in the Lituya Bay in Alaska. The wave reached 100 feet in height and covered the mountains approaching the bay. As a result, all vegetation up to an altitude of 1,700 feet above sea level was destroyed. And this is the height of five and a half Statues of Liberty. On a shore, nature itself will hint at the approach of a tsunami. Animals feel the disaster coming and begin to rush somewhere in a hurry or behave strangely. Birds form flocks and fly away. If on land, get in a car. On a bike, run. Ask King Kong to give you a lift at the very least. It's advised to get to a height of 120 <gasps> feet above sea level. Arnold, you better get to the top floor of the Empire State Building. The skyscraper's height is 102 floors, or 922 feet. The elevator goes up at a speed of 700 feet per minute, so you definitely have time. Oh, well, that's also possible. Don't shout underwater, otherwise you'll choke. Keep yourself conscious by any means. Arnold, hide! These are the neighbors from below. You're drowning them. Well, that's it. I've got to go. And you'll figure everything out by yourselves. Yeah. Bye. Why do you need this stuff, Arnie? You want to make a real-life version of Minecraft. Yeah. Easy schmeasy. Did you know that Minecraft is the second best-selling game in the world after Tetris? And the very first version was created in just six days. So which is better? Minecraft or real life? It'd probably be cool if when life seemed too difficult, you could choose an easier mode. Here you need fear, neither scary stuff nor hunger. But it's really not that interesting. Let's choose survival mode. Now we have to act like in real life. Find food, build a house, defend yourself, and gain experience. Of course, it's much easier to do it in the game. With just one pickaxe, you can cut down a tree that will hang in the air, and you can get stoned by just breaking it for a few seconds. A day here lasts just 20 minutes, and even your pitiful, pixelated face can get someone's attention. You can eat as much fast food as you want, and you won't get fat. That's a plus. You'll always be comfortable any time of the year, and you don't even have to buy clothes. And you can use a cactus in your house instead of a trash can. It can make any object disappear. If you're bored, you can rename a sheep and it will shimmer in different colors. And yes, here, you can just meet a sheep on the street. Don't forget, it's Minecraft. Time to go home. Oh yeah, I forgot. It's easy to get your house stolen or destroyed. Looks like game over. Welcome back to reality, Arnie, old buddy, old pal. Look, no one destroyed your house. But while you were playing, you did get robbed. Bye bye Arnold. Stop eating in the store! Those vegetables are GMO, genetically modified organism.
This tomato contains a silkworm gene, and your normal everyday cucumber has a 40% similarity to a human from a genetic standpoint. But don't be afraid. GMO isn't scary, and I know just how to prove it to you. Let's genetically modify you, Arnold. It's illegal to do such experiments on human beings. But in 2018, two genetically modified babies were born in China. They were programmed to have immunity to HIV. Now, we're in the Pentagon's tippity-top secret laboratory. They mainly produce GMO soldiers. CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology that allows the DNA of one organism to be implanted into the DNA of another. A regular fish was implanted with genes from a bioluminescent jellyfish. Now it's a glowfish. Vegetables are modified for longer storage and better taste. But what about you, Arnold? Do you want to be taller? We can use the Michael Jordan gene. And we'll remove the sweating gene from you so you stop stinking so much. And meet Arnold 2.0. A new life has begun. Without sweat, people will finally sit next to you on the bus, and your neighbor's grandma will stop calling you a short little redheaded virgin. Now she'll just call you a redheaded virgin. Yes, genetic engineering isn't perfect yet, but it is the future. Designer GMO babies are coming soon. And it'll be possible to remove the cruelty gene from criminals. It's a new stage of evolution. Sweet dreams, Arnold 2.0. Hey, what's going on? Arnold, did you steal all the syringes from the lab? What, you want to inject yourself with the strawberry gene to smell good? And a corgi gene for a perfect butt? Don't do this, Arnold. Stop! Oh, ye gods, what have we done? I was wrong. Genetic engineering is dangerous, not only for the organism, but for the whole city as well. What could be more wonderful than a summer walk in the park? We don't choose our destiny, it chooses us. Arnold, look out! Wow, looks like someone spilled radioactive waste here. Hey, Arnold, now you can be a superhero! Did you know that Marvel's Wolverine was originally going to be called Badger Man? So in this case, you are Beef Skunk Pecker Man. Cool! This is the first time in history when a superhero has three superpowers. But you're not the only one with superpowers, Arnie. For example, a sword master from Japan, Isa. Machi is able to cut a bullet traveling at a speed of 320 kilometers per hour. Slavisha Pajkic from Serbia can literally handle 20,000 volts of electricity, and he can also cook food by running electric current through his body. Wim Hof from the Netherlands is able to withstand below zero temperatures for hours and even climb Mount Everest in his underpants. What about you, Arnold? Wow, congratulations! I see you've gained the ability to hammer nails with your skull, build dams, and even breed superflies on your own body. But seriously, if you think your superpowers are ludicrous, check out DC Comics' Dog Welder, whose power is to weld dogs to his enemies. Zeitgeist from the X-Men, after an all-night drinking binge, discovered he had the ability to puke acid. Did you know Batman's net worth is $98 billion? Seems like being a superhero can be a very lucrative business. And the very first copy of the Superman comic book was sold at auction for three and a half million dollars. And judging by the number of requests on Google, Spider-Man is now more popular than the president of the United States. United States. Arnold, I know this is very cool, but still, the main job of a superhero is not to bask in glory, but to fight for good. Hey guys, the world is in danger. The world is doomed without you. Okay, don't say I didn't warn you.